Hello and welcome to the homestead. Well today I've spent most of the day inside. Um, Nathan was home this morning and so he did a lot of things outside including letting the chickens out, taking care of the animals and such. And so I've been inside working on cleaning up the kitchen in preparation for the project that I'm getting ready to do right now. So right now there are sprinklers going outside and I've already gone outside and picked beans. Um, but that is a very small project. The project for right now, I'm actually getting ready to make some venison jerky. Now this venison jerky is a new recipe to me and normally I use just a very simple um, soy sauce, Worcestershire sauce, apple cider vinegar with brown sugar and, and salt and pepper type of recipe. Um, but this particular recipe is actually a teriyaki jerky recipe and it comes from Stephen Ranella's cookbook, The Meat Eater. Now we got this book shortly after it was released um, last fall and it is full of recipes for all sorts of preparations for meat. Anything from um, breaking down wild game or fish or fowl to making blood sausage or even there's a wonderful coleslaw recipe so it's full of recipes that any meat eater should have in their kitchen and today I'm going to be making his jerky recipe now Stephen's book says that this is the queen mother of all jerkies so in fact that's the title right here and it's a, a very simple recipe um, anybody can do it he says right here in the book one of the best pieces of jerky i ever ate was from an axis deer i killed on the hawaiian island of maloki my hawaiian hunting partners marinated the slices of peppery homemade teriyaki sauce and then air dried them out in the sun under a piece of window screen to keep the flies away this recipe is inspired by that experience. So it is kind of a Hawaiian recipe. It calls for um, pineapple juice, Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, honey, red chili flakes, things like that. So I will be prepping the meat. I actually still have it in the package. So I will show you step by step what I'm going to do with this venison jerky. Okay, so Steve's recipe says to freeze the pieces of meat for at least two hours. This allows the meat to be uh, more frosty, easier to slice, but unfortunately my fingers have had some minor frostbite in the past from doing chores in the winter, so I have a very low tolerance for very cold items. So this is actually refrigerated and it will be as cold as I can stand myself. In fact, when I grind meat, I actually have to wear gloves, um, just regular uh, medical type gloves, to give an extra barrier between the cold meat and my hands. When I grind meat, I do actually cut pieces and put it in the freezer for a little while and then pull it back out, but that makes it even colder for my hands. So uh, the recipe says to cut the meat into uh, 3 8 inch slices and when you're making jerky you do want to cut it cross grain that allows you to actually you can see here you can see the fibers of the muscle this is um, actually the bottom butt of a deer and the the muscles run this way on the leg and so you actually want to do a cross cut, cross grain on this and that will allow you to have uh, more tender jerky even though jerky is dry and tends to be more uh, leathery to eat. Now this, this muscle I have not actually trimmed up. They say that when you put your wild game away you want to leave it in as large pieces as you can um, before you break it down. If you're getting ready to process it right away, then you could possibly 
break it down further, but last year we were actually living in a camper while our house was being built. So during hunting season, all I had the, the counter space to work on was to just break down the quarters and get it packaged up and put into the freezer. So you would want to trim it out, whatever piece you're, you're doing takes the silver skin off, anything that's um, you wouldn't want in your jerky. It's it, Everybody has their own preferences, how trimmed out they want it to be. Um, mostly I just want the extra bits and pieces off. Um, if the silver skin looks real thick, then you could absolutely take this off. And you do that by just poking your knife in very carefully. You don't want to cut yourself or cut too too deep a cut. And you just kind of stretch it out. And then you're only cutting off a very small amount of meat. Now, depending on um, the meat itself, if this was not previously frozen, this silver skin would actually come off much easier than it is here today. But as you can see, I'm just cutting off this this thicker portion here at the end where the muscle would have attached to the leg itself. And then you take your muscle and you'll have some bits and pieces um, not everything will be uniform on a muscle such as this because there are actually multiple muscles in here. You can see that there's actually connective tissue in here. So you have multiple muscles, but this, this works out fine. The jerky that I made previously turned out great. And as I said, if you were to freeze this for a couple of hours, it would be quite a bit easier to slice. However, my hands don't have a whole lot of tolerance to the cold. So you just do it the best you can. Have a nice sharp knife. This particular muscle is quite difficult because it is um, multiple muscles in this muscle group. But you can see even, even when you slice it, this actually still makes it a decent piece of jerky when you get it all done. And you do want these to be as even as possible so that your batch of jerky dries as evenly as possible. Um, of course, there's you're going to have some pieces that are a little chunkier, maybe some pieces that happen to be thinner, but those you would select out as the trays dry, then you just pull the ones that are dry and leave the ones that are not dry yet. There you have it. All of this meat that I have set aside will um, be marinated this evening. Okay, so Steve's recipe calls for several different things. It calls for honey, Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, pineapple juice, garlic, and red pepper flakes, onion powder, brown sugar. This is ginger powder. Um, I do not have any fresh minced or shavable ginger so I'm going to use the dried powder and then this is black pepper here and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add all of these things to a quart jar and this will allow me not only to mix the ingredients together but it will allow me to store it in the refrigerator until later this evening when I actually combine the marinade with the meat uh, to set overnight so I'm going to add these dry ingredients here to my quart jar. Set that aside. 
And then to my Worcestershire sauce, I'm going to add half a cup of pineapple juice. And one cup soy sauce. And then I'm actually going to stir this honey right into this liquid. And you can always warm up the honey a little bit and that will allow it to stir in better. Now this will be able to sit for several hours so the liquid um, will actually dissolve the honey and the brown sugar. Now the recipe says to use fresh ginger, a one inch piece of fresh ginger. So like I said, I'm using the dried ground ginger, which is what I happen to have on hand. And then it also says to use a microplane to grate your uh, garlic. I do not happen to own a microplane, so I will be using my old standby. I'm going to just use a little knife to kind of pull the skin of the garlic out of the press. And then I just use the knife like so. Now I do open it sometimes like this one was a large clove of garlic so it did not actually mince all of it now if I had a microplane I probably would have used it and what you would do with that is you would actually peel the garlic first and then you would run it through the microplane and then to these dry ingredients, I'm going to add all of my liquids. Give it a good stir. Like I said, I'll be putting this in the refrigerator until this evening when I actually am ready to marinate the meat. I have probably six plus pounds of meat to slice. So I actually have made two batches of this marinade. Well, it has been about 24 hours, and now it is time to put the marinated meat onto the dehydrator. Normally, I marinate my jerky meat for 8 to 12 hours, but this particular recipe from the Meat Eater Cookbook has quite a bit less acid than what I normally use. So, following Steve's recipe, it recommends 24 hours, so that is exactly what I have done. So yesterday I covered my bowl with just a simple plate and put it in my refrigerator to keep it nice and cold while it marinated for 24 hours. Now this is a very simple dehydrator. Um, it works on convection. It is definitely not the dehydrator of my choice. It just has this heat element. Now the recipe does say to dehydrate it for a couple of hours at 145 degrees Fahrenheit, but obviously my dehydrator does not run that warm. So it does actually have to dehydrate overnight. 
and depending on the thicknesses, if the jerky slices are uneven, they might have to go even longer than that. And then I pull them off of the trays as they do dry to the proper level of moisture. I set my tray that I am laying the jerky out on actually on a sheet pan. Any size uh, cookie sheet, uh, plate, anything that you have that can catch the drippings. You wouldn't want to put your jerky actively dripping directly over a heating element like this. Um, in fact, the directions for this particular dehydrator say to put your food in a container. Although I'm not sure how you would put jerky in a container. So this jerky is ready to go to be dehydrated. Um, I don't have to do anything else to it. When I make my pepper jerky, I do actually shake black pepper or other seasonings over the top of it after I get it laid out. And that just gives it extra peppery flavor. Um, but th this recipe, I'm following it exactly except for the fact that, as I said yesterday, that I did not have the fresh ginger for the recipe. And you can put these pieces of jerky somewhat close. Um, you do want to make sure that you allow air circulation so that your bottom layer of jerky uh, does not get overly heated uh, in addition to your top layer not being dehydrated enough soon enough. So put them close but leave enough air space so that they're not um, touching or closing off the circulation of the air. And these little small sections can be filled in by small pieces. Um, because this is not a ground meat jerky, you will have more of the air spaces that are kind of puzzle pieces on your tray, but that's perfectly fine. Um, that's what makes venison or wild game jerky unique in that it's not ground, it's not uniform. Um, one thing that I will say, make sure when you slice the meat that you do get it as even thickness as possible. And there you go. There's a full tray of jerky ready to go onto the dehydrator. Now I will continue to do the same process with each of these trays until all of the meat is put onto the trays. The um, marinade will just be poured down the drain and I will put the lid on and plug it in and let it sit for 12 hours and then we will check it again tomorrow morning. Well, the jerky has been drying for over 12 hours now and actually some of it was ready first thing this morning. So I have actually already pulled it out of the dehydrator and I wanted to show you what it looks like partially dehydrated and then it will also need to stay in there until it feels completely dry. Now when you dehydrate jerky you don't want it so crispy and hard that it's hard to chew or that it's breakable and brittle. You want it kind of bendable and pliable. So here's a piece. <laughs> My little helper. Say hi Wyatt. Hi. <laughs> anyway, you want your, your jerky bendable and pliable to where it's mostly dry. Um, because otherwise, when you go to store this, if you're not keeping it in the refrigerator or the freezer, it will mold. In years gone by, we actually did have a large batch of venison jerky mold. That was very sad because there was hours of labor put into it and of course, the wild game was wasted. So anyway, I'm gonna show you the uh, dehydrator and what the partially dehydrated jerky looks like. Well, Ethan's going to be my helper, and he's going to show us how uh, we actually turn over the jerky in these dehydrators. Now, as I said uh, previously, these dehydrators are definitely not ideal for hardly anything. Um, they work great for drying fruit slices and things like that, but for jerky, they're just not as efficient, being that they use by 
they work by convection uh, rather than a constant blowing warm air, um, such as with the Excalibur uh, dehydrators and, and dehydrators that are designed like that. So I actually have a tray that needs to be flipped over. This is what it looks like when it is about half dehydrated. Um, now I did start some in the oven and have transferred them to these trays as well, but this is exactly what they look like when they've been in the dehydrator all night. And then all I do is I pull them off and turn them over. And then of course pull off the dry ones as they are ready. Okay, your turn. And you can see how the texture is very soft. They're still spongy. Um, this would probably spoil very quickly. Uh, they need to be kind of leathery and pliable and yet be mostly dry. <laughs> like this piece here, this piece is ready. So when I go through and work on flipping these pieces of jerky over, I actually do check them. Um, that way they're not staying on any longer than necessary. Like this one, this is done. So anyway, this is definitely the queen mother of all jerkies. Um, the recipe, I do have to admit, is better than my original uh, homemade, made up recipe. Um, this recipe comes from Stephen Ranella's book, The Meat Eater. It is available on TheMeatEater.com and as well as Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and other fine book dealers. Thanks Steve for a wonderful recipe book. We do enjoy it and we enjoy your podcasts and your meat eater videos on Netflix as well. For all of our viewers, we do appreciate you stopping by the homestead today. We hope that you enjoyed this jerky making video and please do go over to TheMeatEater.com and uh, check out all of the things that they have over there. And again, thanks for stopping by the homestead. Bye. What do you think? Good, good. He hasn't even eaten any of it. Whoa. Mmm. Ah. That's some crispy. Mm -hmm. Is that yummy, Ellie? Mm-hmm. It's nice and crispy. Okay, everybody wave bye. 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 And this is what it looks like when it is Oops. And we hope that you enjoyed this 